Hi YouTube! So, here I am with a new video on my series about GNU slash Linux and PCI, PCI Express. In my last one we have talked about the theory behind the base address registers of a PCI device. And for today I have prepared a little program which will print out all the information about the bars, but I have missed one part. So, now in this video I will show you how to actually write to the configuration space of a PCI or PCI Express device. So, let's start. So, here am I connected to an old PC of mine over SSH and I'm doing this on a separate machine because this is the first time we're actually going to write to a device. And if we made a mistake, something could crash and for me, I think it's better if this PC crashes than my main production machine. But normally, um, normally there shouldn't there shouldn't be any crashes anyway. But of course, there's never a warranty, so <laughs> okay. And here you can see I have cloned my fork of PCI utils, and if we look into it, I've already added two programs we have programmed in the last videos. Here we have a less PCI caps, which will show us all the capabilities of a PCI device. And the second one is PCI header, a program to print the header of a PCI device. And for today I have added the program PCIBars.c and I want to quickly go over it and then we will add the writing part. So if you want to know more about um, how the base address registers of a PCI device work, check out my last video. Today I won't go too deep into theory, I, I want to focus more on the writing part here. Okay, so now let me just open my source code here. This is a program to... Um, yeah, let's change it here. Um, PCI bars program to get information about the PCI, about the bars of the PCI Express device. Okay, and let's start by looking at the main function here. So we're passing three arguments to our main function. The first one is the bus, device and function number of the PCI device we're interested in. Down here we are um, initializing our access point to the PCI bus and here we are scanning for devices. Down here we are converting um, the, our bus device and function numbers from strings to integers. And here we are searching for a PCI device with the past bus device and function number. And if we find a device um, this will be the pointer to our device, but if this function returns a null pointer, there is no device found with the bus device and function numbers we have passed. Down here we are calling the function which will um, get the information out of the base address registers and then print them out. And the last thing here is because we've allocated and initialized something, we have to free and deinitialize it. So this is what PCI cleanup does. Okay, so now let's look at print bar info function. Here it is. And we are um, storing all the available information about the bars in the struct array bar info. We will take a look at it in just a second. And I'm setting this to six because on an endpoint there can be up to six base address registers. So the maximum value here is 6. So let's take a look at the struct here. So the struct contains all the information of a base address register. The first one is the type, whether the bar is used or not. If it's a 32-bit I.O. bar, then the value is set to 1. For a 32-bit um, memory bar, it's set to 2. And for a 64-bit memory bar, it's set to 3. Okay, the next one is the size of the bar, and the next is a job pointer to a unit of the bar. And 
possible units are bytes, kilobytes, megabytes or gigabytes. And I've created a little function down here, which we give the size of um, the bar in bytes and it converts it to the biggest possible unit. For example, if we pass 496 bytes, it will convert um, the, the, this into 4 kilobytes and store it here in this variable. It will store a 4 and this pointer will point to kilobytes. Okay, now the next um, variable indicates whether um, the memory is prefetchable or not. And the last 64-bit integer variable um, is, is um, stores the address the operating system has mapped the bar to. Okay, so now let's go on in our print bar function. Down here I'm declaring some variables, nothing interesting here. Here I'm testing if we have a valid device or if we have a null pointer here. Okay, and now the next thing I have to do is, because PCI bridges only have two bars, so I'm reading back the header type of my PCI device, and when it's um, greater than zero, we know it's a bar and I will set, oh, it's a bridge, and I will set the bar limit to two. And down here I iterate through all available bars. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm reading back the current value of um, the base address and I'm storing it as an address into my address field of my bar info struct. Now I'm, take, I'm taking a look. Um, I'm checking if um, the address is all zeros because in this case the bar is just not used and I will print up bar iteration variable is not used and I will continue with the next um, iteration. In case the bar is used, now we have to actually write to the bar because you maybe remember some of the bits of the base address register are hardwired and some of them are read and writable. So by reading all ones, we will only change the bits which aren't hardwired. And now for writing to the PCI configuration space by using the PCI lib, we need the function PCI write and then the unit we want to write. For example, if you just want to write a byte, we would use PCI write byte. If you want, we want to write a word, we would use PCI write word. But now we want to write a D word, and for this we have to use PCI write long. The first argument is a pointer to the device we want to write to. So in our case, it's the past PCI device dev here. The next argument is um, the, P the offset we want to write to, and this is PCI base address zero plus our iteration variable. And because we have to be aligned to four, I will add a four here. I will multiply four to my iteration variable. And the last um, argument here is the value we want to write, which is all ones in this case. Okay, down here I'm reading it back, and now I'm checking the bits. Bit zero indicates whether it's an I.O. bar or an, a memory bar. So if bit zero is set to one, we know it's an I.O. bar. So I'm setting the type to one, and here I'm getting, I'm calculating the size of the bar. For more information, see my last video. And the last thing we have to do is we have to write the address which was initially stored in the base address register bag. And for this, we can use this function here again, just changing the all ones to force i dot address. Yeah, that's converted to a 32, to an unsigned 32 integer variable here. Okay, but if this bit zero is, uh, is zero, we know it's a memory bar. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm looking at bit three, which indicates whether the memory is prefetchable or not. 
if it's 1, it's prefetchable, and 0 for not prefetchable. And then I have to check whether it's a 32-bit I.O. memory bar or a 64-bit I.O. bar. And for this, I have to take a look at bit 2, uh, bit 1 and 2. And if we get a 2 bag here, we know it's a 64-bit bar. And if we get a 0 bag here, um, we know it's a 32-bit bar. And of course, here we have to um, read ba write back our address as well. So I'm just copying this line down here in. But in case it's a 64-bit bar, we have to write to the next bar all once too. So let's just copy this line here, put it in here, and adding an offset of 4, which will write the old ones to the next base address register. And of course, in this case, we have to um, we have to write the address back as well. Here we see um, I'm actually writing from two um, reading from two um, bar addresses to get um, the address and store it in this 64-bit digital variable. So now for getting the address back in, let me copy this line here. Yeah. Okay, normally it isn't pos um, necessary, but I will end it with all ones. Okay. And now we have to um, write uh, the address of the next bar back in two. And for in this case, we have to shift to shift this value to by 32 bits because now we're writing the upper 32 bytes here. Okay, so that's it. And down here I'm just printing out the information about the bars. Okay, so I have already added um, my target to my make file. So here I'm added I'm created a new target and here it is. So now let's try to compile it. Okay. And to run the program, I have to get super user rights. And let's now look at the available devices. Okay, let's start with this um, PCI um, one port parallel adapter here. So I just have to execute PCI bars for 9.0, which is our bus function device ID. And if I'm executing it, I see all six bars are used. The so first five bars are um, eight bytes big. It's a 32-bit I.O. bar. And here we have the I.O. addresses um, the bar is mapped to. And bar five is a 32-bit I.O. bar with a size of 16 bytes. And it is mapped to this address here. Okay, maybe let's take a look at two more devices. For example, this Firewire controller here. Zero, so we have a 64-bit memory bar here with a size of two kilobytes mapped to this address here. The memory is not prefetchable. And yeah, maybe let's take a look at this VGA compatible controller here. 5050. Zero, five, zero. 0, 5, 0. So here we have one 64-bit memory bar with 60 megabytes mapped to this address here and a 16 megabytes 32-bit memory bar mapped to this address here. Okay, cool. So now we have a program to get um, information about the bar sizes. So this is my last video about um, PCI Express programming in user space. In my next one, we will already write a simple driver for accessing PCI Express and the PCI bus. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.